you are trying to decide if you need a new roof. And I am so excited to introduce to you two people that helped me decide if I needed a new roof. I'm Megan Murphy, and I'm an insurance claim specialist. I deal with getting clients uh, full roof replacements due to storm damage. My name is Josh Ernst. Uh, I'm an insurance claim specialist as well. I was also a project manager. So we see everything from start to finish through the insurance claim and through the production phase of the, the roof replacement. First, we got to qualify and figure out if you even need a new roof. Let's only talk about asphalt shingle roofs. That could be a swear word real fast if you say it real fast. <laughs> so tell me the signs that any homeowner would need to look out for to figure out if they need a new roof. So you don't always know that you do have storm related damage up there, but a lot of times, uh, whenever we get the calls, it's almost too late because you're starting to get leaks and you're having issues with the roof. Mm -hmm. So we always recommend getting the roof at least inspected once a year after 10 years, usually around that 10 to 15 year time frame is whenever the roof has kind of started to break down, depending on the amount of storms that you have. And that's most of the time whenever we start to see problems happening with with roofs and what we look for we're out canvassing generating new leads we look for like sing shingles walking up to a door we'll check out your gutters and downspouts and see if you have any little dings in those or if we see uh, holes in your window screens these are all indications of storm damage so we look for all of that we also look for algae like, streaks because Normally, you don't get those from seven to 10 until you're about seven to 10 years in with your roof. So that tells us how old your roof is and if we even want to come to the door or not to inspect you. So yeah. I live in Charlotte, North Carolina. You're based in Charlotte, North Carolina, that we have hurricanes. You wouldn't think being so far inland that we have high wind events and hurricanes and hail. Um so I'd say, too, is if there is a big weather event like that, I think it's really important, even if your roof is newer, that you may experience some damage, even if you're not getting leaking or anything like that. Um, something that I noticed uh, that was happening, because I have the ability to see inside my gutters, is this started kind of with a gutter problem. Mm -hmm. So another thing is, if you personally are experiencing a gutter problem where the, the water is not draining, and your gutters are starting to sag. One thing that my gutter guy told me is the um, asphalt was starting to collect in my gutter. So it was literally shearing off the shingles and becoming a problem as well and weighing down my gutters. And hail can actually uh, accelerate that granule loss as well. Because whenever the hailstone, you know, immingle, it's going to knock some of those granules loose and, and it, you know, run into the gutter. So. Yeah. Yeah, so I know it wasn't just a gutter problem. It was a roof problem, too. So I think we covered the average lifespan of an asphalt shingle roof. So like 10 to 15 years, you'd say. So the shingles are typically rated between 30 to 50 years, but okay. also in a perfect environment. Typically, we see it about half the, the life is mm -hmm. usually what you'll you'll get out of it. Or, you know, that's the time when you'll start to have problems with with the roof. If somebody's brand new to this process, they think they're having a problem, what's the best way to find, I'd say, not only a qualified roofing contractor, but also a professional roofing contracting company? Then I always say word of mouth. Like that is everything. So like talk yep. to neighbors, talk to your friends, talk to your family, see who they've used in the past, right? But then you also want somebody in the roofing industry that knows how to handle the insurance company for you if you're going to go that route. These contractors out there, they'll say, you know, they have insurance um, claims, yeah, experience, just get the job. But then when it comes to um, a denial, they just walk away from the, the client and leave them hanging and don't have, you know, any fight in them to get that overturned. So I think if you're going to go the insurance route, you really want to talk to people that have actually done it. Not all contractors are created equal in this industry. I always tell people that. And you want someone who is going to have your back through the whole process and, you know, fight the claim if needed, um, if you're wrongfully denied for any reason. So, Do you think it's good if the roofing contractor has a website with testimonials and reviews? And because yeah. I definitely checked you out online. I'm not going to lie. You yeah. know, yeah. Nowadays, as, as you go online and see if does somebody have Internet presence? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So to make sure they, you know, they're good, they got a good website. Um, we're also certified with certainty. So mm -hmm. um, Shingle Manufacturer Certification is always a good sign. Yes. They go through a extensive testing process. They don't just hand out those certifications very easily. So 
um, somebody that's actually trained to put on the type of shingle from directly from the manufacturer and has taken that training uh, is also very important. You want them to put on a full, complete system, not using any generic project products or cutting any corners. Um, I know with your roof, we ended up putting a full certainty system on it, all the way from the the underlayment to to the ridge cap, and and everything was included. Yep. So what I thought was so great and what was so professional, I didn't really have to be involved. I mean, I I like that. I'm a busy woman. I'm running a business. And Megan, you basically are like, I'm going to take over and just like sit back and and we'll handle this. And you know, you uh, from scheduling to letting me know there's going to be somebody on my roof to following up with me um, with pictures. I mean, just walk through kind of what that process looks like leading up to, okay, I've got a problem and we can file it with um, your homeowner's insurance. Something right. we hear a lot too, like uh, a lot of the thing or one of the thing that keeps homeowners from wanting to file is they don't want to deal with the insurance. Yeah. So it all starts with, you know, the base inspection to even find out if you even have damage because I'm not going to put in a claim that I can't get approved. If you don't have enough damage, what I do is I just put you on a hot lead list and then I come back after each storm season and mm-hmm. you wait until you have accumulated enough damage to get you approved. Um, okay. That's the step one. So step two would be I send you the photos showing you your damage and explaining that you do have enough damage. And uh, I think that I can get you approved. And then the homeowner. And, will and you even highlighted what I liked in my photos that you highlighted the damage. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was very obvious as a homeowner that you weren't trying to scam me. You weren't trying to just put on a roof because it, it, like I, you hear rumors about, oh, well, roofing contractor, they'll cause damage to try to get a claim where there is nothing further from the truth. I, I truly had a problem. I think it was. Did you tell me a 75 percent? My roof had had some sort yeah. of hail damage. Yeah. yeah. And look for a whole stories too. you know, check like your gutters, your downspouts, your screens. We, we want to make sure that there's an actual storm date for your area at your specific location. We'll pull, we'll pull storm reports. Um, that kind of determines if we want to move forward with the claim as well. So it, we, we look for that full story before we do anything. Um, we never push you into filing a claim either. It's totally up to the homeowner. I always say, hey, I'm here to help you. I'm here to get you approved if you would like to move forward. There's no obligation with the inspection. Um, after we do file the claim, that's when um, me or Josh or someone in the company will end up meeting with your adjuster on your behalf to point out the damage for you. So you're not, you don't even have to be involved there unless you have some leaks. I was not. I was watching from the window <laughs> and uh, I didn't have to get up on my roof. So, hey, that was good. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and you want to make sure that a contractor is there to go up on the roof with the inspector or with the adjuster. Um, just to kind of hold them accountable, make sure it is a, a thorough inspection, make sure that the damage that we found is, you know, documented and included in their report that goes back to the desk adjuster or the insurance company. That's all very important. I always tell my clients that that is the most important part of this process is mm-hmm. that someone is there holding the insurance company accountable. Mm-hmm. Um, because, you know, if they're not, then... I mean, it's you're you're kind of at you're kind of at their their mercy. Yeah. Hey, we didn't find anything up there, and you, um, you weren't actually up there to to see. So you just kind of have to take them at face value. But, uh, you know, if if we're there and we've shown you the damage, we can make sure they include it in their report as well. Then, um, we wait for the insurance company to send out an approval uh, estimate of what they're willing to approve, and then that's yeah. when. The homeowner will send that over to us and we have a, a specialist, a supplement specialist team that looks over all that and makes sure that everything that the insurance company was supposed to include in their estimate mm-hmm. was in that estimate. So then we go back and forth with your insurance company, maximizing the claim for you as well uh, to make sure you're getting everything that you're actually owed. Uh, insurance companies love to leave little things off here and there to save millions of dollars every year. So... Uh, we're kind of in your corner in that in that angle as well. So. Yeah. Full disclosure up front that you're able to get me a full replacement through my homeowner's insurance, less deductible. I tell you, as a homeowner who's been paying homeowner's insurance for, you know, 25 years or more, I felt real good taking advantage of my homeowner's insurance that I've been paying into to pay off this roof. You probably paid for it twice in your yes. and, and it and and your my, your premiums don't go up. I think that you know people might associate insurance like car insurance, but nothing happened once we made the claim. My homeowner's insurance stayed the same, 
and my premiums didn't go up on my house. Yeah. yeah and they can't um, penalize you for this type of claim because it's considered a catastrophic claim. It's not something that you as the insured did out of negligence or, or something to heal out or could have prevented yeah. it. So, um, although I have heard insurance companies are raising rates regardless, so I'm telling people take advantage while you can. And the, the cost of roofing itself doubles every five years. Yeah. So, you know, uh, it, you, if something has happened or a, a major storm has happened, you want to make sure you do get it inspected because you want to file that claim in a timely manner. So, you know, what's the window of time? Because I remember you had that on your note about like you had hail damage in this month, this time. It's different for every state. Every state uh -huh. has different rules. But in North Carolina, there's a three year statute of limitations. So you can file a claim up to three years after the actual storm date. Uh -huh. uh, but the closer you file it to the storm date, the better. They are more likely to approve directly after a storm than if you waited, you know, two years to file the claim. Down the road. Uh, yeah. although, okay. we, although we do get people approved using storms for, from three years ago because yeah. they have the damage. So yeah. we had a conversation about this. So there's partial roof replacement. Um, there's shingle repair. And then there's a full roof replacement. Talk about that a little bit, what that means. So the insurance companies aren't roofing experts. They, they specialize in insurance. Uh, so, so it's very, very important to make sure that you have a knowledgeable contractor out mm -hmm. there to, even if they do send out a, a repair scope, you want to make sure that, um, the contractor knows what's actually currently on the roof. Is it a, is there current product? Is it discontinued? What, who's the manufacturer? Because a lot of these manufacturers have, uh, guidelines and, and recommendations that say, do not mix this product with uh, any other mm -hmm. products on the market or previously produce products. So, and, and by doing that, any, any remaining manufacturer warranty that you have on the roof, if you were to violate those guidelines, uh -huh. you are also uh, violating or voiding that warranty that you had on the roof. Um, it's also important to know that the manufacturer installation requirements are uh, backed by building code. So you're not only mm -hmm. voiding the warranty, but you're also violating building code. Uh, if you are performing repairs against the manufacturer guys. Or if you're a DIYer is like, I'm going to save myself a few bucks and yeah. remove. Like, yeah. like people yeah. need to understand like the DIY aspect of this can totally invalidate their warranty on their roof and create problems down the road if, if exactly. they just want to do a repair themselves, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just, you know, they, the insurance company says, oh, we'll replace 12 shingles. We, you need to find out if that's even a uh, a possibility. possibility. Yes. Yeah. yes. Is it is it technically possible? Yes. But are you gonna, you know, voiding the manufacturer's warranty, violating their installation guidelines and, and violating code? Most likely. And then I've seen I've seen some of that done in my neighborhood and it, it the shingles don't match. Yes. And I'm the queen of color. It looks yeah. like so, you know, there's that factor too. <laughs> it just doesn't look good. Well, same with the statute of limitations being different in every state. Every state has different um, insurance requirements based off of like matching. Mm -hmm. So North Carolina is not a matching state. So the colors don't have to exactly match, but they yeah. do have to be reasonably uniform and consistent in appearance. Yeah. Uh, but even if the colors don't exactly match, the shingles do have to be compatible with each other. So we so don't you have certainty shingle system before you need to repair and replace with certainty shingles of the same quality. And yes, ex yes. exactly. Okay. Same Even if it doesn't, it's not a perfect match. Exactly. The same, yeah. same size, same pattern. And, and you need to make sure that the manufacturer allows that. So a lot yeah. of the manufacturers will put out technical bulletins, letters saying, Hey, we've made a sizing change or we've made a technology change. Do not mix our new product with previously existing products on the market. And you can imagine over, you know, 10 to 15 year lifespan, there's a lot that happens yeah. with technology and it gets yeah. better, frankly, you know, things yeah. get better in time. Can you give me a general idea for asphalt shingles, like per square foot, what normally would the cost be? So in roofing, everything kind of goes by squares. So that's a 10 foot by 10 foot area or hundred square feet. Um, so for one square, the cost is typically between four to six hundred dollars per square. Okay. Um, so if you have a you know twenty square roof, you're looking at around twelve thousand dollars 
uh, retail price, but then that also, um, there's some variables in that as well. Are we replacing all the flashing? How much flashing is there? Are we just replacing the shingles? So there's a lot of different variables and you're looking at like four to $600 per square. And then the other thing is, um, we talked about this too, that if you find any damage, I mean, that there's another component here too, that once you pull up all of the roofing material um, and the barrier, that if you find any damage, you know, that that potentially could need to be repaired. And I, I felt what was kind of nice about that is, is you didn't find any when the roof was intact. My old roof was intact. But what I felt good about is if you pulled everything up, that you would have repaired what you could on the spot. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. So once we once we tear the roof completely off down to the decking, all the shingles, all the underlayment, everything, we do evaluate the roof decking to make sure it's a nice solid surface for us to mm -hmm. be able to attach the shingles to. If you have any had any previous leaks, maybe even ones that didn't show up on your, you know, as ceiling stains inside the home, uh, right. it could have softened that decking. So we're gonna cut all that out, replace any damaged sheets just to make sure everything's nice and solid before we start putting the roof back. What is your favorite brand of asphalt shingles for a roof? <laughs> Definitely certainty. And it's not because um, we're certified in that. Even before when we used to work for prior companies, we've been on a lot of roofs and we've seen that certainty shingles hold up the longest, in our opinion. And I really feel they have the best colors as well. Yep. Imagine there's more Asian importers bringing in cheaper materials. And I, I mean, I've seen that be impacted all across the home improvement industry. And I feel like a longstanding brand that has an entire system, it's kind of like for ladies out there, you know, you like to use your shampoo and your conditioner together. It's And it makes it work better and the serum and all that stuff that the same applies with a roof that you want all of those layers. I mean, we can talk about a little bit when you do replace a roof, like what are all the layers that go into getting a new roof? It's, it's important to make sure that you do have a full system on there. Number one, because it's all backed by the same manufacturer, you're not using any generic third party products um, that if there were ever any warranty type issues that somebody could be passing the buck from, oh no, it wasn't from this product. It was from this product. If it's mm -hmm. all, you know, the same certainty. So if, you're, so if someone's interviewing a new contractor, they, a roofing contractor, they should check in to see, are they using a system? Yeah. Um, or is, are they piecemealing things together? So yeah. I guess that's maybe another important question to ask somebody too. Yeah. So. A lot of the, uh, a lot of the suppliers, they have their own house products that, you know, they can uh. use and they do sell, but you know, the, the certainty products or the, the manufacturer products do cost a little bit more, but in order to get that full system, to give you that additional warranty, we, we always do that full system. So and I got a little bit nervous thinking about you guys coming to my house and getting a new roof and something that I also felt like kind of leveled you up as a professional contractor is you made a point to come to my home and mm -hmm. talk me through what to expect because it is a little nerve wracking thinking there's going to be a bunch of people up on your roof, yeah. right? Definitely. If somebody doesn't prepare you at a time, ask them questions. So you get yourself prepared. Even if somebody doesn't offer the information, definitely do a lot of this prep work the day before the roofing contractors like to show up early because it's cooler out yep. and they knocked on my door and I was still in my pajamas. Um, We also send out a build prep sheet. I don't know if I know you received it in the text. Oh, yeah. We also yeah. send out again in an email so you get it twice, it's kind of telling you steps like if you have an addict, make sure you put down some plastic or old sheets over anything valuable because of the dust and debris. Uh, we, we ask you to have the cars out of the driveway the night before the build. Um, we tell you, hey, the, uh, the material is going to be coming either the night before or the morning of. And we just kind of try to coach you through that and keep you relaxed on what to be, you know, what to expect. Oh yeah, that's right. My my shingles just showed up in the driveway on a pallet. I just yeah. that. you warned me that they were coming. I I forgot <laughs> that happened. <laughs> See, it was so seamless. I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we kind of do that. We 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 want you guys to not have to worry about that. That's why we send you the text and the emails so we can prep you. And you're right. It is nerve wracking. It, it it's not a clean process at all. Uh, but we do take <laughs> precautions to to make sure that it's as clean as possible and easy to clean up as possible. So we're going to protect your house with uh, a catch-all system. Uh, sometimes we use an equipter, which is like a hydraulic dumpster that we can actually lift up to the roof. 
Um, we'll have guys yeah. on the ground constantly cleaning up any of the debris that is falling down. But, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it is a messy process. But as, as I'm sure you can attest that, you know, we cleaned it up and it was like we were never yeah, there. After you left, by the deal. other than I had to turn some chairs a little bit to my preference, yep. I would have never known you were there. And yep. like you even went as far as using magnets to pick up roofing nails and all kinds of things. So some of the things that I worried about that I made sure I, I picked up and got out of there were small potted plants because yep. they can't handle, you know, you guys are trying to protect the landscaping mm -hmm. um, and the side of my house. So that catch all system. Um, I definitely made sure I got my car out of my garage and parked it on the street because the big dumpster and all the materials and people are in your driveway because that for my house, that was the best way for you to access everything because I have a lower roof line. Yeah. I took in all of my cushions and my pillows as well. Other than that, the preparation for it was pretty simple. Now, I remember asking you if I needed to be home when this happened. And obviously, you have to be there to receive the people coming to your house and make sure everything's okay. But I stayed home the whole day. It feels like a war zone. Things were shaking. Uh, my Many of my pictures were crooked by the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a very loud, noisy situation. So I would say if you work from home, you do video calls like this one, you definitely would not want to be working at home when you're getting a new roof. Well, and the other thing I have to tell you, since having my roof replaced, I've been very surprised that it's still cool in Charlotte. My heat is running for a less amount of time, which hmm. means that I'm getting less heat escape. I'm actually starting to save a little bit in my energy bills, which I was not expecting that result. Also be contributed to the Saphir products that, that are on the roof because you, you did yeah. you gave you, you know, several upgrades uh before you just had the black tar paper fell. I believe you had a 30 year shingle on your roof and um uh -huh. we upgraded you to that synthetic uh underlayment, which is a like a tarp material, a little bit more breathable, a lot more durable, and it's waterproof. Uh, and then the the new shingles. That's, that's another reason why it's important to have a contractor that you do trust. Yeah. Uh, I do tell people, like, if it was my house, I wouldn't want to be home during the process. Uh, yeah. We're going to make sure everything is 100% taken care of. And You would have not been hung. I would have been out there sending you update photos throughout the day. Ah, okay. That way you don't have to deal with it. You don't have to hear it. I think this was really helpful for anybody who is investigating wanting to get a new roof, if they need a new roof, what the whole process is like. And do you have any parting words of anything I haven't asked you or things that are watch outs or any different information that you'd like to share with people? I would say that if you have had storms or you're not sure if you've had storms or what condition your roof is in, or it's been a while since you've had an inspection, definitely get it inspected. Yeah. And if there is damage up there, um, the, try to do something about it sooner rather than later because these yeah. companies are changing their policies. They're yes. changing the way that they uh, handle storm damage claims, maybe with higher deductibles or percentage of the home value deductibles. And, you know, rather than the the standard, you know, $1,000 to $2,500 deductible, you may be looking at a ten to $15,000 yeah. deductible if these policies, you know, wow. keep more changing in the industry. Um, I mean, they're they're trying to figure out ways to not have to pay for storm damage claims, and they're trying to make it harder on the insured uh, by changing policy language and deductibles. This is what we're hearing in the industry um, that's coming. And the inspection would be from like a company like you, right? Because I think my first thought is, do I have to hire an inspector? How do I do that? You just go to a, you, just the whole process of finding a reputable roofing yeah. contractor. You yeah. Do most people do these inspections for free? I think that's yeah, another good question. They should. Yeah. They if should. you're yeah. if you're being charged for the inspection, I would say you probably need to look for a different contract. For yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Are you know signing up, re-signing your policy, or um, you know getting getting your new policy? Make sure you that you do it. know the language yeah. in there. Ah, uh, that's good advice. They, yep. Yeah. Right. They they might sneak something in there that you're not aware of, and then whenever something happens, that's when you find out about. Guys, thank you so thank you. much. I really enjoy talking to you. You uh, clearly know everything there is to know about getting a new roof. And I hope just anybody listening to this just feels so much more comfortable and understands the process. And I feel like you've done such a great job explaining that. And I am so pleased. Mm -hmm. I highly recommend um, Wide Meadow Roofing. 
if you're in the local Charlotte market, um, you know, you cover, I'm, I'm sure, a wide area and definitely give them a call. I'll be linking all of their information so you can get in contact with them and get your roof inspected, especially if it's 10 years old. We want to get on that or you've had uh, a storm or any hail damage. Yep. Awesome. All right. All right. Well, thank, thank you so much. much. Thank you. And I'll go look for that check in my mailbox. <laughs> All right, Tracy. Thank you. All right. Thanks, guys. If you found this information helpful, please like, subscribe, and share with a friend who could benefit.